This NorthJerseySports.com multimedia presentation is brought to you by Classic Mortgage. Need financing for a new home? Want to refinance the one you already have? Classic Mortgage has you covered. Specializing in all types of mortgages, FHA, Veterans Administration, new construction, traditional and more, Classic Mortgage has the keys. Talk to one of our home finance experts today. Call us, 201-906-7457, or visit our office at 25 East Spring Valley Avenue in Maywood. Open the door to your new place with Classic Mortgage, your hometown lender. We are Talking Big, NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series, talking all things baseball across North Jersey. This is Season 2, Episode 5. It really should be Episode 6. I am Corey Dobiak, and the reason why this is not Episode 6 is because my trusty sidekick over there decided to take a week off. Joey Fashion Show, where you been, bro? Listen, you know the story. It's a loaded, that, that, that's a setup right there. You know that we had a fiasco at my house, my son flipping over the handlebars, the emergency room. We were originally going to do a show last Thursday. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. All right, then you said Friday. And you being the CEO of, of this podcast, and, and of NorthJerseySports.com, should have called me on Friday, which you didn't. So then I figured Saturday, because you said Friday or Saturday, and my son, flipped bottom, over, my son flipped over the handlebars, emergency room, fiasco. So here we are, episode Joe, four, five. Joe, your son flips over the handlebars or does something like uh, about three times. If, if I'm going to work around his schedule and get hurt, we'll never get the show done. <laughs> Why don't you, you know what, though, uh, let's get the quick update. I mean, you know, I've been walking around North Jersey. Just because you're not working on NorthJerseySports.com doesn't mean I'm not. Right. I'm, right. Out, of, I'm out at fields every day. I'm talking right. to people. You know, a lot of people mention they like the podcast. They like talking baseball, and they, they, they are keeping up with the saga of your son. So well, why don't you uh, give us a quick rundown of uh, where you are presently and what's been going on? Right now, I am at a wiffle ball tournament in, in Ridgewood. And uh, my wife teaches here. It's, it's a good thing. The kids are raising money to go to Cooperstown. So, you know, it's 50 bucks. They got literally 13 games, very organized, food, everything, families, great atmosphere. I'm actually hanging out with Jim Grosso, the athletic director from Ramsey. Wow, uh, you're moving around. You're moving around in, in some hoity circles. At all. Uh, if you're hanging, if you're rubbing elbows with Jim Grosso, you're, you know, no you're, doubt. you're big time. You're big time. So, um, <laughs> You know, we're up here, and uh, my my two kids, you know, as you guys all know, we live in Little Ferry, but my wife teaches in Ridgewood, so they come here, and uh, it's good for them to uh, to mix and mingle with, with these kids up here, too. And um, <laughs> I'm sure they fit right in. Oh, uh, the black sheep, actually. They're uh, organizing the tournament. The, the, the two little Italian kids from Little Ferry are, are running into the temporary fences head first, and... You know, people are like staring at them, and my wife is mortified because she has some sort of a reputation to uphold here as a teacher in the district. And, uh, you know, it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. Yeah. Joey, my, my oldest boy, uh, tripled and singled in, in the tournament. Um, James struck out um, and proceeded. How do you handle it? Ah, I don't, I don't lie. It's getting old. It's getting old. He launched his bat. And then in the second episode, I was actually on the phone with Brian Jalalia from, from uh, Hills. and uh, Ooh, that, Now your name's dropping. Oh, absolutely. And again, rubbing elbows with Jim Grasso on the phone with Brian Jalalia. I mean, you know, right. it, you know, does it get any better than that? So, no. you know, take the chair over. So we had to go do some, some crisis management, but we're good. Everything's okay right now. All right, good. Until his next at bat. I hope he hits yeah. a home run. Or it's going to be, uh, <laughs> gonna be held to pay over. Yeah, the he's the type of kid. You know what he is? He's the type of kid that I never wanted to coach. I never, I never wanted that kid on my team. I couldn't handle handle failure. But yet, <laughs> if, if he gets a jack, like if he, if he gets one out, right, he'll right. flip the, he'll flip the bat and be high five and everybody. So he he's on the path to like one of my least favorite players of all time. We we got to get that ship right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to write the ship as far as uh, North Jersey baseball is concerned here. we got a lot, of talk, lot to talk about, and we're going to do it with a lot of guys. Because last episode was skipped, we're going to make up with it, for it with three guests tonight. We are going to have Waldwick head coach Frank Clark, Riverdale head coach Brandon Flanagan, and Fairlawn head coach Jamie Graceffo. 
all three head coaches of teams still alive in the state tournament. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here, Joe. This is the fun time of the season. Yeah, and you know, it's it's. Uh, I was thinking about the the three guys we we said we were going to have on. Actually, we're bending the rules for flying in because we only usually have two guys on. Now, is it? I, I listen. Let's just clear up this situation before we get to him. I mean, okay. I did talk to him about a potential appearance on Talking Baseball. I, I admit that it was. Uh, yeah, I was I was taken up in the euphoria of the Bergen County Tournament quarterfinals uh, right. two weekends ago, and, and you spoke too soon, basically. Right, so you know, I, I listen. I didn't, I didn't give him a firm commitment, a firm date. I didn't say, you know, we're going to have you on here. And then, you know, we skipped last week, so uh, whatever. And now I understand that some protocol has been breached here. Well, he invited himself on the show. He basically <laughs> sent me an email today. What's up with you and Doviak? You want to do a show with me and Gams? So now, not only is he inviting himself, but he's telling us who the other guest should be. So. <laughs> Now, you know, Flanagan's getting a little bit too big for his britches. You know, he's, he's had a few years now in a row where he's been sectional semis, county semis, county final. I think yep. he's feeling his oats. You know, he won his 300th game this year, which is a big accomplishment. And now he just, yep. you know, I won 300. Now I can just invite myself on, on podcasts and things. And, it's, you know, it's, it, that, that end of it's not working out. But I will tell you what is working out. Whatever it's- formula, whatever formula that Waldwick – Fairlawn and Riverdale have going because if you if you look at all three teams, they don't really have that one kid that jumps out at you. I know you got the you know the Heidler kid in Fairlawn. Um, he jumps out at me. I saw him pitch in the uh, opening round. I haven't I, I I haven't seen him this year. You have Walsh and the Salmonese kid in Waldwick, but again, not really. You're not reading about them every day. And in, right. in Riverdale, I mean, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I, they got the kid, uh, what's the kid's name that's 8-0? Uh, Jake Fisher. Yes. Okay, but again, a kid that's 8-0, and 0, and how many times have you heard of him? So they really have, all three teams really have that team concept going. Um, they're playing their best baseball now. Um, and, you know, uh, we're also very fortunate because you have Flanagan and Clark. Between the two of them, they've won over 500 games. Frank won his 200th game this uh, earlier this year. Brandon won his 300th. So, you know, we're in we're in very rare air, Corey. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And then listen, you know what? I do feel like I fit in with that crowd, though, and I'll tell you why. Because like yesterday that. yesterday in a fifth and sixth grade recreation softball game, big yeah. game, yeah. Uh, Northvale 2, which is the team that I coach, along right. with, you know, my, my wife and uh, our, our daughter, Hope Dobiak, a, uh, you know, that's in the top part of the order, you know, whatever. Right. She's and a, she's a spark plug. Right. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. You know, the, the the blood and guts of the team. Sure. And big game against Harrington Park yesterday. Now, Harrington Park has two very good pitchers, fifth and sixth grade softball pitchers. They throw fastballs, blah, blah, blah. And we played them to a 0 0 tie. So I feel like I'm right in there with a guy like Brandon. No, 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 don't even. You can see, therein lies the problem with society today. Everybody strives for mediocrity. 0 0 tie. Joe, as a matter of fact, they believe. Tie. Edit that. Edit that comment. Or you can beat it. You can beat it. I will not. I am going to stand on my record. Uh, an undefeated week for the Dobiak family over here. That's awful. But my kids are not listening to this episode. That's terrible. They're going to go, Dad, you said Ty stink. I said, they do. They, they, it's like you didn't even play the game. And you're going, oh, I'm so proud of it. I'm going to have to have James in with my team. <laughs> Give him a little attitude. All right, let's talk some baseball. We are going to, in between these interviews, during these interviews, and then after these interviews, we'll wrap it up because we do have to talk a little bit about the Bergen County Tournament. We're taping this on Friday night. The semifinals will be played on Saturday. Uh, The big boys are still left in Bergen County. And then we'll go around some of the other groups, the other brackets in the state in, you know, North 1 and North 2 where we have teams still alive. Right. And just touch on those things. Too, but all right, Joe. Well, we welcome in our first guest of the evening here. He joins us live on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline. He is Waldwick head coach yes. Frank Clark. Frank, thanks for joining us here on Talking Baseball. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, you're having another. Yeah, you want to say a great season, but you're having another great season up there in Waldwick, coming off what was it a three-one win over Hasbrook Heights in the North One Group One State Quarterfinals. You're on to the semifinals. Uh, you're the number two seed. You got a game against Hawthorne coming up in the semis. Uh, before we get into specifics, just give us a little 
state of the state on the Waldwick Warriors? Well, uh, you know, I don't want to sound cliche, but I think the best thing that could have ever happen to us as a team was uh, getting our lunch handed to us by Emerson a couple of weeks ago. Um, it it, uh, it was a uh, soul searching mission after that, you know, and it was uh, you know, check yourself in the mirror. Are we are we giving it our all every day? Are we just throwing the gloves on the field a little bit? And uh, I think everyone got a little full of themselves because we played tight with Bergen Catholic in a two one game and. Um, you know, we didn't respond too well after that. So uh, uh, I thought we were, it was going to be the opposite, but uh, it's actually, you know, and, and Joe, you know this, and guys, you know, uh, I think you learn a lot more from losses than you do from wins uh, sometimes. So and I think uh, we've responded well. We're playing some pretty good ball right now. Joe, you, every time you would lose a game, this is what we'd hear in the Glen Rock dugout. Paging Dr. Cirillo. <laughs> <laughs> I love exactly. it. I love it. I actually, I tried to call him today, and he blew it off because I he, and I know he saw because he was on the other line and it was beeping. But um, anyway, Frank, you guys, you know, uh, Corey said it right. I think another another good season, and you know, um, I think the same thing. I think you do learn a lot from a lot more from losses at times than than you than you do from wins. The, the wins feel better, but as a team. You know, to come back and I, I don't know what, what happened there. I think it was two in a row or, you know, you dropped three games and, you know, now you got things going well. It's always better to be playing uh, your best baseball at the end of the season. Um, what do you think? What, what clicked? What clicked? You know, I mean, Emerson, Emerson handed it to you a little bit and, and now all of a sudden you guys are, you know, you're rolling. I, I'm familiar with a couple of your kids up there, but, you know, what, what turned it around? Well, Frank, I, I, before, I, Frank, just before you answer, I just want to – I'm in, installing a new feature here on the show. No, uh, now, now hear this. Okay. Every time a baseball cliche is uttered from here on out, the cliche air horn will be go, will, will, uh, will, will play. Okay. Who, so who uttered right. your answer? Let me ask you a question. Who, who uttered a cliche? No, nobody uttered a cliche. No, you both both of you in the in the first two minutes were up to about ten. So I'm just uh, just you know, know just Frank, for future warning. Frank, hang up and let him do the show on his own. <laughs> let him do the show on his own. Because you know what? Can, we I, were say, going uh, over can I say Omaha like the Manny Omaha? Well, he's Omaha as a word too for the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna Joe. When I go back and listen to the show, I only listen to my parts anyway. So if you hang up, it's I don't really care. Typical. Your ego is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> but seriously, ahead, Frank, 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 you guys have always been a team. Always been a team. When I was at Glen Rock, and, and you know, we we would come up there. You guys play. You know, um, aside from the distractions of you guys yelling numbers and thinking we were at the line of scrimmage in a football game, with you yelling two twenty one nine fifty seven. You know, <laughs> in all seriousness, you guys always, right. always bang, always bang the baseball, and you know. What what clicked? I mean, the loss to Emerson, okay, you said maybe, you know, woke you up a little bit or, you know, the, the loss to Bergen Catholic, but, but now you're, you know, you got things going. Was it just a matter of, of, you know, getting the train back down the tracks? Was it a speech? Was it was it one of those kids? Was it the Salmonese kid talking, team meeting? What, you know, what turned you guys around? Well, to be quite honest with you, and I know I, I don't want the cliche horn to go off, even though I like it, but <laughs> they're ready what for it was – I had to really, <laughs> I, I had to really, you know, after that loss, uh, we had a little, they had a little team meeting with the captains, which was great. Uh, I think that was, that was really good. And then the other thing that, that really helped was, you know, I think that everyone at that moment, we had kind of lost the, even though it's a tight knit group, I, I think everyone was like, not that they were playing for themselves, but I kind of, when I did, I did, I went to the old, uh, the Pacino, uh, uh, any given Sunday speech, and we no, watched didn't. it before our, we did, we watched it before oh. our next game. And right. we, we, we watched it, and I said to them, the line I, I took from it was, either we're going to heal as a team right now, or we're going to, we're going to die as individuals. Uh, and it's going to, the season's going to be over in a blank. And your seniors, your season's going to be over. Uh, for you younger guys enjoying this season, it's going to be over in a blank if we don't, if we don't, uh, right the ship right now. And we came out, uh, pretty fired up. And, and I know we're not, it's not a, you know, baseball's not a physical game, but we had a better approach. We, we were, and not, you know, it's just sometimes you just need a little wake up call. And I think it was a great thing for us. And 
we, you know, you know, you got to get creative. Uh, you, Joe, you know this. You got to get creative sometimes. And I was trying yeah, to think of something, yeah. and you know, and it, it was that was excellent. I, I really think it helped us a lot. But but you know, no, Mike Salmoni, he and Campbell, our two captains, were really good, instrumental. I they had the team meeting, and you know, I, I think it, it's really helped us. And and uh, we're 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 feeling we're feeling good. We're feeling good. Good. You should be. You should be. I, the one time I got, I, I tried to get creative was I, I, I tried to do something similar at uh, Glen Rock, and we had uh, the Ray Lewis speech where the kids, you know, he had the team uh, at a practice. I forget what college it was. There was lightning and stuff going on, so they were just gathered in the locker room. Oh, it was and, incredible. Uh, I remember that, yeah. Oh, I would say it was a fantastic speech. I mean, you know, you, you, you get the goosebumps. You're ready to go. You go out on the field, and here we go. We're ready. Second round of the States. Blanked by Dumont, four nothing. So since then, I've never ever tried to be creative before or after. That was the one and only time. But you've always been able. Those kids have always fought, and 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 since you've been there, you know the element of class that you've brought to uh, to Waldwick, and you know you're a hard guy not to root for. So uh, you know, I hope you keep it going. I, I really appreciate wow. it. I really no. appreciate What's it. What's that? <laughs> no, I mean you just very you know. I, I don't want to use the term ass kissing on a uh, no, you know, high school. Hey, let me tell you something. You've been asking for two I'm weeks. On You've been saying for two weeks, who's the guy we need to get on the show? Who's the guy that we need to get on the show? And what have I been telling you? Frank Clark from Waldwick, great guy, great guy. He's the he's the the best coach that nobody ever hears about. He, you know, he won his 200th game this year, and 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 he's a likable guy. I mean. You know, there was a time where Frank, he was, hey, tell him to do his research. Is this your first appearance here on NorthJerseySports.com? I mean, who loves Frank Clark more than Rich Barton and myself? Oh, I, I mean, I'm a cute. We had a great girls basketball segment. It was awesome. But, uh, yeah. yeah, we did. We did. I, I, I love the show. And Lee Barber loves the show. We were just talking about it. Uh, but, I, you know, Joe, I really appreciate appreciate your words. And, no, uh, and I know we're in a love fest right now, but no, uh, you know, Joe, Joe's an outstanding coach. He knows that, uh, oh. you know, and, and uh, I, you know, I mean, he's doing a, a great job over at Woodward. We were just talking about it with Mike Mayer, my AD the other day about, uh, oh, Mike Joe Mayer. being I'll over at Woodward. You have Mike now. Mayer over there. Yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Corey, yeah, great, he's a uh, great hey, story. Hey, Corey, great story. Ahead. Great story. And shockingly enough, it involves controversy and Joe Gambardella. These two, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> greatest, greatest story ever. Gambardella and Waldwick, uh, uh, Waldwick and, and Richfield, you know, battle. And I think it was like three years ago, four years ago, uh, maybe even longer. They had the Hidalgo kid, you know. And, oh, I remember and Joey that goes, one. Yeah, remember that one? Joey goes up oh, to Waldwick, and, and I think Waldwick laid it on him, or, or you know, beat him. It was, a, it was a nip and tuck game, whatever. One guy got knocked down. Another guy got knocked down. One of Joey's kids said something to Frank, and Frank, Frank was like, "What are you talking about?" At the end of the game, I get a call from Frank Clark. What the hell's the matter with your boy Gambardella over there? <laughs> Twenty minutes later, he goes, "Yo, I thought you said the guy Frank Clark was a great guy." I'm like, "Dude, what's wrong with you two? Iron it out. Take care of it." Now they have nothing but respect, and, and you know everything's ironed out. But, yeah. You know, shockingly enough, it involved Gambardella and controversy. Uh, and that's, that's two guys that are, uh, get fiery, you know. So we had, you know, uh, uh, that's, I, I had a great, great, yeah, it's a great, uh, guy, you know, and Cam's does, you know, great job, and, and we got a lot of respect for each other. Absolutely. All right, Frank, let me ask you a baseball related question. What do we got to do against Hawthorne here coming up? You know, it, it a lot is made about your home field, and it's key to have a good regular season, get this home field advantage. Not necessarily because it suits your game, what it, uh, but it. What it does to the opponent is it psychs them out a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe they get out of their approach. They start swinging for that right field fence that's not really, uh, you know, part of their everyday game plan. You guys know how to play there. Right. You know, just talk about this matchup with Hawthorne. Well, you know, uh, I've seen uh, Coach Pissarro's team a couple of times this year already. Um, All right, let me just get it out of the way. Coach Pissarro does a great job. Great guy. Got to have him on the Oh, show. yeah, no doubt. Continue. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, no, but no, but I've watched them play a couple of times, and uh, you know, as a hard-nosed team, um, and they got a lot of tough kids. I mean, the, the Grafsick kid uh, is a bulldog on the mound. Uh, I know if I see him on Tuesday, uh, they hit, they swing the bat well. They have some real athletic guys on the team. Uh, it's going to be a real tough matchup. And the thing that's still different about the team that that I have this year, Waldwick. Uh, just from seeing the numbers, we're not the, 
you know, put runs up in bunches group. You know, it, it's been a lot of pitching and defense that's helped us. And, um, and I feel you know, the Hasbro Heights game the other day, it was a 3-1 game. Uh, we played a clean game in the field. We pitched the baseball. The tone's been started with our pitching. Uh, team ERA's in good shape. Uh, you know, we've, we, we've, uh, we have to work a little differently because there are a lot of young guys in that lineup. Uh, from about four down where we got to get a little creative. So it's a little different looking Waldwick team. So we, when we play home games, we haven't really capitalized on that, on the short portion, right? So we, you know, we still have, we still, we're still learning. A lot of young guys are still learning how to play on that field. But, uh, with a guy like Salmonese at the top of the order and, and a senior like Dan Walsh in the three spot, Connor Walsh's brother. Uh, I'll give him a shout out. You know, was, they're in the round post in the, you know, the College World Series today out in Wisconsin. And Connor, Connor's playing right. over at Round Paul, doing a great job. And, uh, but, you know, Daniel's come in as a senior and, and, and really picked up some big time slack and is hitting the three spot for us. And he's, he's really doing a nice job for us. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping and I, I don't think, and I'm being honest with you, I don't think we've clicked offensively yet. Uh, I think we, we, we've had some good games, but I think we haven't put it all together. So I'm looking forward to, to build up to that where we're, we're playing our offensive best. Joe, anything else for Frank Clark? I mean, I think he said it, said it all pretty no, well. No, right I just, there. you know, I, I think honestly that's, that's one of the most, uh, that's a very intriguing matchup you got up there with, uh, with Hawthorne. Um, you know, again, they, they're a team. I, I talked to John quite a bit and, um, you know, he, he's got them pitching well and playing defense. And I think, you know, it, it's it's honestly what, what Frank summed it up. I mean, you know, you don't make any mistakes in the field. You can't make mistakes and give. Right now, all the teams that are left are, are, are solid teams throughout, you know, whether it's lineup, defense, pitching. Now, the team that makes the least amount of mistakes is, is, is uh, more than likely going to win the game. So it's definitely a good, uh, a good matchup. As a matter of fact, Corey, I, th- I think you should cover that game, to be honest with you. I promised to cover how many games on Tuesday already tonight, oh. but it's certainly on the uh, on the agenda for Rich Barton and myself Don't send to Barton. go over. I don't love send a game. Barton. That, that that would be that would be an insult to both coaches, both programs, and, and just don't do that. If you can't go, then have nobody cover it. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I'm going to pull that out and use that as a quote for the uh, rest of the season here on Talking Baseball. Frank Clark. Well, I should say, Joe, you know, that's the old uh, bracket that you used to reside in back when you were the New Milford head coach, North Warren yes. Group 1. Interesting, on the, top, on the top side of the bracket, you got Emerson, who we just spoke about a little bit. Uh, they, they host number 12, Cedar Grove, uh, with the winner of Waldwick Hawthorne getting the winner of Emerson, Cedar Grove. So I love the small school yes. baseball. And, Frank, if, you know, if the, uh, if, you know, the schedule allows, I will be there to see it. And if I'm not there, it's just because, uh, well, I wanted to be there. So, Frank, I totally understand. thank you for joining us here. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank and, you so uh, much for having me out tonight. I really yes. appreciate it. Frank. And don't let Joe Sotero walk around acting like he discovered you, for crying I, out loud. We love I the I did not say I discovered him. All I said was, you said, Joe, who would be a good guest? I said, Frank Clark. Let's get Frank Clark. And then you made me text the guy, and we didn't have him on. So now, who's got egg on their face? Me. So, Frank, I apologize because I'm accountable when I when, when things like. Listen, I, I, I'm so Joe, happy we'll to be. Hold on, so it, it, my wife. Is, my wife is beeping through. I got to put you on hold and switch back. All right. Well, we'll let Frank Clark out of here while you talk to your wife. Frank, thanks for joining us here on Talking Baseball. Best of luck and. Listen, we're going to see you in either Tuesday or, you know, I'm going to predict that you're making the final. We'll All right. Thank so, you very much, guys. Good luck and we'll talk to you. I have Thanks, a great Frank. night. Enjoy the, enjoy the Memorial Day weekend. All right. Well, that was interesting stuff there with Frank Clark. And we have lost a member of the crew here as an Amber Alert has gone out for Joe Sotera's son. He's going to join us back here momentarily. But the show must go on. So we are we go from small school, Waldwick and Frank Clark, to now large school, Fairlawn. And we welcome in the Fairlawn head baseball coach, Jamie Grisefo. Coach, thanks for joining us here on Talking Baseball. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure to still be uh, around this late in the year. Yeah, it's got to be a great feeling. And, you know, it's funny, too, and I, I covered your game the other day against Morris Knowles and speaking to you a little bit after. You know, it's Fairlawn is in a funky spot because you kind of drop off the uh, Bergen County radar during the regular season. You play in a predominantly Passaic County league you guys jump up in the Bergen County tournament. You give Bosco all – win a game, then give Bosco all they can handle. And then, you know, North 1 Group 4 is not full of Bergen County teams either. So either. So you guys have kind of been on the periphery 
but having a great season. I mean, uh, you know, and I apologize for not covering you sooner. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you know, it, it is kind of uh, odd. You know, uh, I go to our league meeting, which is at DePaul, and um, all the schools in our division basically talk about, you know, say county meeting and, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm kind of left looking around because, you know, I'm not not real sure of, you know, what's going on there because that's not my, you know, my county. So I, I right. do that. And then I have to be in touch with, you know, Greg Butler and, and some of the other, you know, dignitaries of Bergen County baseball to, you know, to talk about my kids and, and see, you know, what meetings I need to go to for, you know, try and get them some maybe all county awards and things like that. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely, uh, off the radar. And, you know, I, I think sometimes it helps us and, and sometimes it might, uh, might hurt us a little bit as far as seedings for a county tournament and that kind of stuff because we just don't see that many teams in county anymore. Yeah, and do you get any help from the athletic director's office? I mean, you know, as far as I know, Corey Robinson's a hockey guy. Uh, well, Corey, <laughs> Corey, Corey loves his hockey. Um, but, yeah, he, he, he's real good at, uh, you know, pretty much getting in touch with whoever I ask. And we always try and pick up some independents in, in Bergen County and, and, and a couple in Hudson um, a few years ago, uh, we started picking up some Essex. So, you know, he he, he gets us around. Yeah, he, he gets you some ice time. You're lucky that when the uh, <laughs> when the equipment bag showed up this year, the, that the bats weren't crooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let, let's talk a little bit about the cutters here. And obviously, you know, the guy who has gotten a lot of press, and, and rightfully so, is Corey Heitler, your senior pitcher going to Wagner. Uh, I saw him, again, in that Morris Knowles game. Seven innings pitched, one uh, one earned run, six hits allowed, eleven strikeouts, zero walks. That's going to win you some games. Um, yeah, he actually. Uh, it's hard to tell in our book because uh, two of those strikeouts reached, but it was actually thirteen strikeouts. Oh, that, you, you know what? You're right about that. And yeah, <laughs> uh, so you know, then the strikeouts about a catcher. So our kids don't write the K nearly big enough sometimes. Um, I have to go through it, you know, comb over it to make sure I'm getting the right stuff. But he's, and I, I made the same mistake in my book. Don't blame your kids. I've been doing this for a hundred years, and I made the same mistake. Yeah, you're right. He's uh, and he had three strikeouts. Yeah, in, in that in the fifth inning, he went. Uh, how about this for a fifth inning? He goes strikeout, 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 and he finds himself a runners on first and second and one out. Uh, <laughs> and I tell you, that could be real frustrating, especially for you know an 18 year old kid. But he is so just committed and and you know paying attention to detail that. Um, you know, he he seems to just bear down and, and get stronger in situations like that, you know, where um, maybe a couple of years ago when he was a little bit younger, you know, that stuff would affect him and he, he'd come in with, with a fastball, um, you know, and and maybe just try and get one over and, and end up get, getting hurt with it. Um, now he continues to pitch through that kind of stuff and says, okay, what do I need to do to be better here? You know what I noticed? I got a, a strong sense of it when I was, first of all, watching your team play, but second of all, talking to your, some of your kids after the game, especially uh, John Klimowicz. Very high baseball IQ uh, on your team. Klimowicz had the big two-run single in the fifth inning, and not only what, did he do it on the field, I'll explain the play, but he also was able to verbalize it after the game, which just, like, to me, impressed me because he was thinking – he was thinking the right baseball thoughts and then was able to verbalize it as to why he did it. Obviously, he gets the single and he tries for second base to protect the second run scoring there, you know, giving himself up, showing that he's doing it for the team. And then he talked about it after the game. And, you know, there were a lot of situations where your kid made – your kids, not just Klimowicz, but a lot of them made the right baseball play. Obviously, you need the kids who are willing to be coached uh, and be into it like that, but I think it also speaks a lot for the way you're you're running your program over there. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, it is true. I mean, these guys. Uh, just for, for instance, uh, I went to the mound to talk to Corey in one of the situations with the uh, last game. With I believe there was a, a runner on third base. We were holding a two-one lead, and their three hitter was up. Who, in looking, you know, over more Snell's three hitter was. A, a, a very good hitter, hits to all sides of the field. He's he's very fast, you know. And uh, Corey went 3-0 on him. You know, so I called time out. I, I go over to the mound. I said, hey, you know, 3-0, what do you want to do here? You got a base open. You want to, you know, go after four. And, uh, you know, he looked for a second. And he said, you know what? He goes, uh, he's not going to be swinging here. He's like, let me get to 3-1. He's like, then I'll throw a curveball, see if we can get him to do something on it. He's like, nothing good, you know, with the base open. And uh, right. so I said, okay. 
threw a fastball for strike one. He was taken. And uh, then threw a curveball, got him inside, jammed him, hit a little ground ball to second base out of the inning. You know, so it's that's the kind of trust that I have in them. As long as they have the right answers to the question, I will let them try to execute because they are smart enough, you know, to know what they're doing. Um, and that comes from playing year-round. It comes from um, playing since they were kids, watching the game. And it, it comes from, you know, watching the game with their parents and, and talking to their parents as, as the game's gone. You know, it's impossible for me in a, in a high school season that's three months long to cover, you know, giving yourself up at second base to make sure that second run scores more than, you yeah. know, a couple of times and, and briefly. You know, so that's a testament to, to John and, and his upbringing and how much he plays and how how serious he is, how much he, he understands the higher uh, the higher level of the game. Yeah, and Fairlawn really is turning into a good baseball town. And I say this from experience because my nephew, and I'm not asking for playing time, Coach, my nephew is a freshman. Uh, he was on your freshman team this year. Um, and, you know, just having, you know, been his uncle and talking to my sister and saying, hey, Diego has a game, Diego has a game. Yeah, they play a lot of baseball in Fairlawn. And, you know, you got the good facility down there, the town-run facility. You got the turf. You can get out there all the time. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, especially in a place like Fairlawn where it has a tradition, but there was a gap in tradition, you know, to, to get back up and be a consistent winner year in and year out. You need that kind of whole community commitment, correct? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, you get the, the days of showing up on, you know, the first Friday in March and, uh, right. you know, having a successful season are, are long gone. Uh, it's one of the other things about these guys is they were committed all through the all through the fall, all through the winter. Um, you know, they organized weight room activities, they organized team functions, you know, long toss, throwing, whatever you know they could do to make sure that they were prepared for the season. It's one of the big, bigger differences this year is you know as a team, I think we have nine home runs. You know, and, right. and we play in a pretty big park. Um, yes, so. To, to do that as a team is, you know, just kind of shows their commitment. The fact that you know they're not only playing the game, they're not only getting better, they're getting they're getting stronger. They're putting themselves in a physical position to make plays and and get things done. And that's a, a tradition that this group has really started and have owned. And uh, you know, hopefully those under them understand that and and continue that because I, I think it's very important. Yes, and by saying I wasn't asking for playing time for my nephew, I was really asking for playing time for my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here, let's talk about this bracket. I mean, of all the brackets in New Jersey, not just North Jersey, the whole state, this one is busted up. Uh, you guys are the number four seed, and you are the highest seed remaining. Your semifinal game on Tuesday is against uh, Union City at your place. The other side of the bracket is number 14, Randolph, against number 15, Morristown. And, you know, when you get to these big schools and teams that – don't get uh, that deep in their county tournament or the schedule of the county tournament is, is different. You know, you can line up your number one pitcher, and at a big school like that, uh, like the ones you're playing against, everybody's kind of got one, so anything can happen in that bracket. Uh, you guys took care of business in, in the first round with your ace. You got a great performance out of your number two, and, you know, how do you play it from here with Union City coming in? You know, we'll, we'll more than likely, as, as long as he's ready, go back to Corey. Um you know, at this time of year, I don't. I just, I don't believe in, in in leaving a bullet in the gun for a game that may never happen. Right. You know, um, and we'll we'll play for air and see how the by air and see how the game's going. Um, you know, ultimately, you'd love for him to be able to throw every game when you when when you have a kid that's that special. Um, like softball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, it's a lot easier. They have a lot easier. You know, to, you know pitching rotation, one kid. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Who's pitching next? Same one. Um, <laughs> right. a double header, same one. <laughs> right. Um, but we, uh, you know, we, we, we haven't made that decision yet. Uh, but that's that's the way I'd be inclined to go. Um, and the, from the opening night, I mean, uh, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm doing the stats and, and, and calling in the paper and stuff. And and my assistant coach is texting me, and I'm just getting text after text. This team lost. This team lost. You know, <laughs> this team lost. And you're sitting and, and you you realize, you know, and we're trying to get across to our players, hey. You have a bad day, you have a bad inning, and your season's over. Yeah. You know, you've got to be focused 100% of the time and, and, and 
ready to go. I mean, yeah, um, it's kind of a good news, bad news situation because you guys are the four. You'll have home games the rest of the way. You know, if you make it to the section final, you'll have it there too. Might be hard though when your kids see on the other side that the number fourteen and fifteen are there, and you, they're like, "Oh, we should beat them." Not that that will happen, but I mean, that's something you do have to guard against. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, so sometimes you know, looking at the number in, in front of the team, you, you can get a false sense of security. I mean, there's there's a reason that fourteen and fifteen have made it through to here. You know, and it's, it's you you may yep. catch lightning in a bottle once in this tournament and, and pull an upset, but to, to get where we are now at this point. And moving forward, um, we're going to, no matter what, we're, we'll be playing a pretty good team in Union City on Tuesday. And, and if we move on, we'll be playing a, a pretty good team the next Friday. So, you know, we'll we'll uh, knock them right right out of that pretty quickly. Do you know the last time Fairlawn won a section title? I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. I've, so. <laughs> I've been there 15 years, and my first seven or eight I coached JV, uh, and I've never seen it. So it's been at yeah. least that long. Yeah, well, you got a good shot to do it this year. Uh, you got a fun team to watch. I can tell you that much because I had fun watching them. Uh, continue, you know, continue. Good luck and uh, congratulations on the success so far. But I'm sure you feel the same way as your kids do. Let's go out and finish this thing. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's all year. You know, we talked about goals. We talked about competing for the division. Um, you know, we finished tied for the division uh, for a division title. Um, we talked about making the county tournament, which we've done the last three years, and, and moving forward and actually win, and winning around. You know, a couple of years ago we we made it for the first time in four years. We lost to Riverdale, you know, in five three game, which was very tight. And I think Riverdale ended up going to the finals that year. Right. Um, last year, you know, we um, we made the counties again, and, and we had a uh, you know a, a tough opener. Um, and this year, you know, we said get to the counties, win around. We were able to do that against Paramus Catholic, gave Bosco a good game. And I, I think that even though we, we lost the Bosco game and you know ultimately lost to a very good team, um, but that opened our kids' eyes to, hey, you know what, um, we can play with these guys. We can play with this team. And, you know, that was Chris Masarian throwing that game too. And, you know, he, he threw great for us. Just yeah. ran out a little bit, left the fastball <laughs> up, and, and, and got hurt with it. But um, now we're, we're talking about, you know, hey, why not? Why not win a sectional? You know, why not win a sectional? Why not get there? Why not experience that? You know, um, that's what we worked for, and, and ultimately, that's all we have left right now. So that's our, our number one focus. We don't have to worry about you know um, who we throwing in the county on Saturday, who we throwing in, in the states on Tuesday. You know, we we only got one thing to look at right now. Yeah, yeah well, certainly it's there for you, and we wish you the best of luck going forward. Thanks for joining us here on Talking Hoops. I'm glad I got to meet you earlier this week, and it also proves that I probably should have been covering a little bit more Fairlawn over the years, but uh, we've been doing this website 15 years, you've been coaching there 15 years, and this is the first time we met, so I apologize, but I also appreciate you coming on here tonight, and uh, great stuff, you know, Fairlawn doing well, and I'm happy to see it, like I said, I got a family member in the program, so I'm rooting for the Cutters. Great, well, anybody's, uh, everybody's welcome on the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, sir, and uh Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Let's go, Rangers. All right. Well, the Amber Alert is over. Joe Sutera back on the line with us as we welcome in our final guest of the evening. Joining us here on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline, he is Riverdale head coach Brandon Flanagan. Brand, thanks for joining us here on Talking Baseball. Hey, anytime. It's always good uh, when you're on at the end of the year. That's true. I always say, well, no, I'm not going to say it because it's insulting to the teams I always use as my punchline. So I'm not going to say anything. But yes, right. always better to. I always say it's better to see me late than it is to see me early, right, Joe? Uh, I or, saw Joe. I saw you many years early. Or not see, or not see you at all. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Brent, uh, you guys are are playing well here. Uh, two nothing shutout of Montville in the North One Group Three State Sectional Semifinals, and you know. I cover a lot of that North One Group Three year in year out. First of all, there's a lot of Bergen County teams. You got to let a, you get a lot of head to heads in there, but also what you notice by covering that bracket year in year out, not a bad team in it, and you guys are down to the final four. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know the top seed getting knocked off uh, in the first round up there in Mawa when Garfield beat Mawa. I think that you know perfect example, you know, and yeah. uh, North Northern Highlands losing. Um, early to Ramapo, which, you know, what's a rivalry game, so you kind of got to throw out, you know, everything else. So, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you really got to bring your good stuff when you're playing in that, uh, in that uh, bracket. 
Yeah, and speaking of good stuff, Jake Fletcher improved to 8-0 with the 2 nothing complete game shutout against uh, Montville on the road. That's as impressive a performance as you can have in a state playoff game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, he was on, um, I guess, uh, we'll play Thursday, four days rest, which is about his limit. Um, you know, we've been lucky that we've, uh, you know, he was our county guy. He threw the first two county games and uh, lost a heartbreaker to Bergen last week, 4-3. Actually, he didn't get the loss. Um, they tied it in the seventh and then won it on another pitcher. Uh, but, uh, so, you know, he pitched in hard luck last week, and uh, even yesterday we, you know, we scored enough for him. But he, uh, he bull- he's a bulldog, man. He's just a competitor. You know, he's a senior. He's a, you know, he's a kid who probably could go play baseball uh, if he wanted to. But I believe he's going to TCNJ not playing baseball. So he's kind of, you feel like he's kind of empty in the tank and, you know, getting the most that he can out of, you know, this final run. Yeah, I think Jake could probably play football or baseball down there. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a part of it. Um, I think he's in a good place. Um you know, he uh, he's relaxed. He's happy. You know, he's uh, you know he led off the game yesterday with a double and uh, and scored um, on Chris Weber's single, and uh, and that was a good spot for us to get up one nothing there. I mean, I didn't think we were only going to score one more, but um, yeah, he is. I I think he's. Uh, I think this is it. I think he realized it, and he wants to. He's, he's always been very confident in himself and his talent. So uh, you know, he's letting it show right now. Joe, you're awfully quiet over there. What are you doing? No, I'm letting Brandon's Brand got everything covered. I, I'll just hang up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, earlier in the show, now I got. I have to mark the time. I know I what, go I know what question. I be... I, hey, listen, Corey, I know what question he's waiting to ask. So you got to well, wait. I'm, I know I'm, I'm waiting to ask you because I'm going to tell you something. I, I don't know how. I don't know how you're still coaching the next two games <laughs> after after the ball call. At, at the game, I mean, I mean that, that friend that had to make it, that had to make you nuts. It had to make you nuts. Yeah, I mean, anyone, I, anyone, any, anyone I spoke to that was at the game said it was, said it was, you know, uh, questionable at best in terms of whether it was the bulk or not. And uh, you know, here you are. I, you're, you, you told me four years ago that you turned over a new leaf, and I, and I, and I firmly believe it. it. Took four years to prove it, but man, you handled that well. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, now, I did, are we talking about the county game against Bergen? Yes. Yeah. All right, so I was not there. I was oh. at the other side of the bracket. I had my best guy on Brandon's game, Richie Barton, and I don't think it came up at all in his story. So I don't even know what we're talking about. Whoa, 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 so, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who, who covered well, the game? The Richie Ball game. And this didn't come up? I, I don't believe so. He's you know, all. It's, Brandon, Brandon oh, matter, matter fact, it was the it was the only it was the only part of the other story that we were even mentioned. Uh, you, you would have thought that we lost ten nothing. No, wait, um, I am wrong again. It was the guy Jay Bernstein who covered the game for us. Right? I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the hook. Yes. Okay. So all right. Apologies, Richie B. Apologies, Richie B. Yeah. Yeah. No, your so, article, your guys' article, at least mentioned a couple of our players and our uh, town name, our team name. So. <laughs> okay. So would you like to take this opportunity to respond, Brandon, or are you going to, as Joe Sotero suggested, take the high road? No, no, no. no, no, no. You're not going to be listen. It's, here's the deal. It, was, it wasn't it was questionable. It was um, it was not a good call, especially in that spot. Uh, you know, uh, you never like when, when umpires. And, and, look, I have respect for all those guys. They, they work hard. They want to make the game fair. I didn't think, it, you know, that was the right call. I didn't think it was even, you know, obviously the right time. Um if the next kid hits a three run home run, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a move point. But, uh, you know, it becomes second and third instead of sec- uh, first and second. Kid hits a base hit. Now the kid from first isn't scoring. So, uh, uh, you know, both runs score. Um, my catcher, Stevie Yellen, picks the kid off of first base that got the hit, uh, which was the winning run. Uh, the next two kids, uh, I believe, popped up. Might have been a line out and a pop up to Chris Weber at first base, both of them. So uh, that run stranded. Um, so it was a little tough, you know. It's a little tough to take that, you know, Jake didn't do anything different than he had done the entire game. Um, uh, you know, it's just tough. You know, it's even tougher when you have other umpires tell you that it really wasn't the right call. So it is what it is. I mean, my kids did a great job of putting it behind him and then coming back and winning two state games. So. You know, we're right where we want to be. We're still playing post Memorial Day baseball, which is uh, which is great. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, some sometimes sometimes getting screwed motivates you. 
is, isn't it also great too when you got a guy like Joe Sotero who likes to stir the pot and brings it up? When oh, I, yeah, when I, when, I know, I know. Of course. What did you What did you say to me? Don't be afraid to ask the poignant question, and that's a poignant question. That's I agree a, with you. Oh, thank you. And I thought, yeah, and I thought Brandon did a great job of not sidestepping it and answer it. So listen, that's why this is the <laughs> greatest. Story, you, know, you know what this? You know what this is? This is the re, this is the version of why I didn't go out on the field to question the umpire. Because number one, I'm not seeing <laughs> ball, and number two, as I got to the third baseline, because I did want an explanation, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be happy with the explanation. And there's two thousand people here with cell phone cameras. Uh, and I don't. I, don't oh, I would have loved to have seen that on Instagram or whatever the hell it is. They post yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're not changing the umpire's call. He messed up. He probably knows he messed up in some way, shape, or form. Maybe he does. I don't know. But you know what? We'll take the high road. It's part of the game. We move on. We're playing on Tuesday. Well, you, you just brought up a. Good, you just brought up a good point, and you know this certainly wasn't part of my agenda here tonight. But since you. Do you think differently now as a coach because everybody has a cell phone and because everybody – I mean, gone are the old days when you can just, you know uh, – not that you would do it in a Bergen County tournament game because, listen, everybody's watching that. But, sure. you know, on a on a Tuesday afternoon, do you, has it changed the way you coach or, uh, you know, view your relationship with players, uh, umpires, uh, administrators, and everything else? Um, I think you have to in this day and age. I think – you know, I'll be honest with you. You know, my daughter's team, Pascal Valley, upset Mawa today, and um, to go to the, the sectional finals next week. And I was at the game. And you know, to be honest with you, I videotaped the last out in the celebration. You know, everybody does that. You know, now and then you don't even think about it. You know, yeah. I did it. I did it because I wanted her to have it. You know, so um, you know, I got the last out, and I got them jumping around for a couple of seconds, and you know. So, you know, people just do it. It's a part of society now. So it's for, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a bad thing, you know, I mean, in some cases. Because, you know, listen, I heard a Colin Cowher talk about it on the radio today. You know, nowadays in, this, in gotcha culture, all it takes, you know, you can have an entire career of positives and one negative, you know, can, can destroy you. And that's the unfortunate thing. Joe, is that the reason why you moved up to administration so that you can close the door in your office? Uh, no, because I used to just I used to just take uh, the kids into the corner of the dugout and, and grit my teeth and do it under my breath. So it, there was always a, you know there was always a way around it. But um, I, I think you know what, Corey, this goes this goes so far into conversations that you and I had you know off the air about how accountable um, you know coaches are. Uh, they're, you know they're accountable for their for their practices. They're accountable to answer about uh, playing time. They're they're questioned about every move they make on the field in practice when they're not practicing or on the field, uh, you know, needing to justify everything. And, and, and you know, all kidding aside, it, it, it's another thing that, you know, right. uh, they got to think about it. Any coach that doesn't that doesn't think about it, you know, in that in that moment of passion during a game makes a mistake and somebody's filming it, um, you know, uh, a reputation of, of 20 years, you know, and, and, and 350 wins go, goes could potentially go down the drain because, right. you know, of, of how something looks on a video. So it's it's uh, it's definitely something that unfortunately has has crept in and affects affects all facets of life. So yeah, that's right. It's, it's just one more thing. One more thing. But you adjust. You adjust. Yeah. And with, like, and without the internet, there would be no talking baseball, the greatest local high school sports show devoted solely to North Jersey baseball. Absolutely. We're doing it live. We're gonna do it live. <laughs> No, we're not. We're not doing it live. I can't trust you. All right, Brad. <laughs> Joe, I'm trying to save you, pal, all right? You don't want to go live. Just trust me. But, uh, you are the sixth seed. you got to go on the road again here. You're going against number two, El Pasea County champion, and second seeded Wayne Valley here. I don't know what their pitching rotation is going to be. Uh, they do have Lepresti as their number one. I saw him win the county final, throw an 89, standing yeah. next to a scout. Yep. What do you got to do? What, you know, what are the keys against Wayne Valley? And obviously, uh, fielding the ball, catching the ball, and throwing the ball, chief among them. Um, you know, if he pitches, um, which I've heard, I've heard uh, all sorts of uh, different, uh, you know, possibilities. Um, I heard uh, he is pitching. I heard he isn't. You know, I'm going to believe he's pitching until I get to Wayne Valley and I see otherwise. Um, and he's real good. Uh, you know, I've heard from people. Um, 
Yeah, he's going to St. John's. I mean, he's not going to be bad. Uh, right. Yeah, you know, so, um, you know, it is what it is. You know, I, I had a little bit of a, uh, you know, I know the kids that pitched against uh, Wayne Valley in the in the county semis, uh, you know, who I had uh, once in camp, and um, and he pitched real well, and, and you know, they're they're a good team, you know. So, uh, in, this day, in this point in time, you know, it doesn't matter. Prem is not all of, you know, it says they're the, the what, the eight and the, the four or whatever it is in the yep. other uh on the other side, but that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, anybody can beat anybody. Yeah, and listen, we're in the semifinals of the state sectional tournament. Nobody's throwing a bad pitcher. Exactly, <laughs> and, and like the you said before, the... especially in Group 3 North 1. That's right. Absolutely. No, Joe, sorry. you got another one for him? Or, uh, no. What do we, what do we... No, go I just... Get, now, he's the time. now he's with the time. Wait, hold on. I'll set it up for you. Go, Joe. go ahead, Joe. Tell him how great he is, what a good guy he is. Go ahead. <laughs> it's the time. Of the... No, actually... It's that part of the interview. Actually, I was going to talk about his bracket, and 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 when that bracket came out, you had mentioned before about all the head-to-heads and the and the you know the rivalries and how easy, you know, it could get, it, it could be to get up. Like even you know, Paramus old Japan, you're familiar with each other, you know it, you know each other's history, um, and and there's something to be said for playing, you know, the unknown and and to go up to um, to Montville and and uh, you know. Farland and, and, and play them and get up for that game. It's it's not necessarily easy to go play those teams that are scattered throughout the bracket um, on their home field and you know and come back come back with a victory. But but having played the teams that are in that bracket, I mean, you know, they prepare each other. All of those teams in that in that um, in that bracket prepare themselves by by beating the heck out of each other all year. So it's right to them. It's I, like, you know what? You know, like I said, hey, listen, I was up in Mawa today and I saw Jeff. And we sat there and we talked during a softball game for about 20 minutes. And, you know, we were talking about this, that, and the other thing. And we said, listen, our little Patriot Conference, which is five teams, was two, I think it was a couple outs away and two runs, basically. Both, you know, both us, both us and Ramsey went into the bottom of the seventh, uh, or the, I should say the seventh innings, with leads against uh, Joe's and Bergen. I mean, we could have had three of our five teams in our little conference in the semis. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now, so. listen, nobody is saying that the, the, the level of baseball is, is, is high. It's high-level baseball. There's no yeah. doubt about it. And, you know, Mawa is one of the, the only public school representative uh, left in Bergen County semifinals, which we haven't even talked about tonight. But you know what? I'm going to skip it because <laughs> uh, I, I, I have to cover it. Let's just say that. So, anyway. Yeah, you're right. So, Joey, don't you want to tell Brandon how great he is, though, before we let him off the line? I mean, Shut up, you, but I, you, I, you know, I, I mentioned it. I mentioned it to you last <laughs> week. I said, hey, finally got his 300th win. Maybe we want to put something out there. And, and, and I, I, believe, I believe you were the only media uh, mogul to, to, uh, <laughs> to put something out there for him and give him, you know, give him his, his uh, proper credit on, on his 300th because there's not too many guys walking around that, that have won that. But, uh, no, there's there's no need. Brand Brand knows how I feel about him. It's all good. Frank Clark, yeah. you know, not necessarily. So I had to give him a little bit, but Brand knows. Pool, hey, Joe, no, pool's open, so pool's open so soon, all right? <laughs> yeah, as long as James has a life jacket on this time, he doesn't almost drown. <laughs> oh, Brandon Flanagan, the head coach of the Riverdale Golden Hawks. Thank you for giving us a couple minutes here on Talking Baseball, and uh, keep keep moving, pal. We'll see you in the state tournament. All right, sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right, Joe, interesting stuff there with Brandon Flanagan. We're happy that your family unit is back together in one piece. And we do have some breaking news here on Talking Baseball as Ramsey Athletic Director Jim Grasso has, for the first time ever, retweeted a NorthJerseySports.com tweet. So he runs the Ramsey Athletics account. We are at NJS.com. You can follow us there. But that's a big move. By well, Jim Grasso, you you know you got friends in high places. Uh, well, I'm telling you, I, I walked back around from from behind where the band was playing at this function that we're at, and, and he's standing in the middle of the crowd, and he's going, "I want Dobiak, I want <laughs> Dobiak." I said, "What?" He goes, "I just retweeted him from eight days ago. I don't even know what that means. I it took me 20 minutes to figure out the retweet." He goes, "If he's not at my game, he's never allowed on Ramsey premises again." Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not going to quibble about what the retweet was. I mean, it was uh, the fact that we were publicizing that the his uh, track coach was coming on the track show. He gave the yes, retweeted the, yes, he retweeted yeah. the coming soon quote. So uh, he, he did help me find my kids. All right, good. 
So your kids found Jim Grasso is back in the good graces of NorthJerseySports.com. I've told 10 coaches that I'm going to cover their game on Tuesday. Yeah. But I I will probably wind up at Paquanic against Ramsey. That's the front runner in uh, on my list now. But uh, this has been a great show. I just want to touch on a couple of the other brackets that we didn't with uh, the coaches that we had on here today. Uh, I just did it in North 1 Group 2. you got Lakeland Jefferson. The 1-4 matchup, the 3-2 is Paquanic at Ramsey, so we don't have to go deeper into that. North 1 Group 3 we did with Brandon. North 1 Group 1 we did with Frank. North 1 Group 4 we did with Jamie. We do have to mention North 2 Group 1, where two of our very good friends reside, as number 1 Ridgefield will host Dayton. And Bloomfield Tech is going to get a colorful character visiting their field in uh, the state sectional semifinals, as Anthony Stratton brings his fighting Indians from Weehawken in there. They have no idea what's coming for them. <laughs> the white tornado is about it to is blow ab- the blue. At, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was <laughs> going to say there's an absolute tornado that's going to be in the third base box the entire game. <laughs> Spitting, snorting, oh, 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 <laughs> Amongst a bunch of other things. He's unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah. that guy. <laughs> The other There's one obviously to... no words to describe him. <laughs> right, right. He's uh, great. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're right. And if he wins that game, put him on the list. He's on the show next week. Oh, well, you know what? We, maybe we should save him for the last episode just so we can burn the thing down right, oh, right and proper. If you're, yeah, exactly. If you're going to let it go, you got to let it go the right. If you're going to blow it up, blow it up the right way. Make sure it's done right. I, yeah. I'm really, I'm really, really pulling for him, um, and I'm really, really pulling for Gams selfishly because. I mean, I, I'll have a front row seat to that game. No doubt. All right, the last one, the other team that we have left on the public school side is in North 2, Group 2. Uh, number one, Hackettstown against number five, Whippany Park. But the one we care about is number three, Rutherford, visiting number two, Bernard's. And our boy, Carmen Spina, still involved. Yeah, but he, he always, I mean, you know, I don't know what it is. The last, ever since, whenever that kid Bobby Muscure, uh Graduate. I, I don't know if it was Hackettstown or if it was uh, Bernard's that they played in like a 15 inning game, and you know they always seem to just find ways to to win at this time of year. They've always done it. You know, uh, Spina's got them playing well, and and you know you got to you got to be pulling for the uh, for the Burden County guys there. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be fun. I mean, I wish there was uh, more. Uh, of us to cover more stuff because, you know, I did promise a lot of people we'd be there, and I wasn't kidding because I want to see these games. I'm a baseball fan, so, you know, forget that this is what I do for a living. I also would like to get out and watch those games just for my own satisfaction. I'll pick one. I'll be at one. Maybe I could push you out the door and grab a recorder and do some action too. Richie Ball game will be there, and uh, we'll get some stuff done here. But, Joe, I am glad that talking baseball is back after its one-week hiatus. I am glad we averted disaster. With we the got Terra family, I, and the only yeah. question I have is yeah. how come Brandon didn't invite me to the pool? I swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you got the joke, I guess. You know, we were there a few years ago, and 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 my son two years ago, and and my son James was walking by the pool and just decided to jump in, and and <laughs> never swam before. Uh, you know, not not only did he jump in, he jumped in the in the in the deep end, and uh, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon dove in and actually, actually, I think saved the kid's life. So for every headache I get from this kid for the rest of my life, I, I blame on Brandon Flanagan. <laughs> That's it this week on Talking Baseball. Join us next week when we, uh, our co-host will be Lisa and James Sutan. <laughs> Follow the leader.